Hi there, today I'm going to be walking you through trigger tokens in Marketo and how you can use these tokens to populate field values, extract field values from custom activities, reduce the number of smart campaigns you need to build, and also send context about the trigger that caused the smart campaign to run via webhooks. So before I dive in any deeper, I just want to say I'll put a link to this blog post in the description of the YouTube video so you can get a whole summary of this after the video is finished by going to the blog here. So what are trigger tokens in Marketo? For every trigger that exists in Marketo, there will at least be two trigger tokens available. The trigger dot trigger name token, which is just the name of the trigger. So it's going to be the visit web page filled out form. And then the trigger dot name token, which is the object that the trigger acted on. So if it was the visit web page trigger, then the object it would act on would be the web page. So the trigger.name is the web page URL. Or if it's the form fill trigger, the trigger.trigger name will be the form fill. And then the trigger.name will be the object of the form fill trigger, which is the form itself. So this will be the form name in the trigger.name token. And if it's a custom activity, then the trigger.name is always the primary attribute value of the custom activity. And a bit later on, I'll walk through what the primary attribute value of a custom activity is. So stay tuned for that. And going to the Marketo documentation here, aside from these two tokens, which every trigger has, there are more to there are more triggers in Marketo that have a lot more trigger tokens available. So you can see there's more tokens available for email triggers, like the subject line of the email, um, a link someone might have clicked. And then there's more um, there's more trigger tokens for Salesforce triggers. Then I find the most useful ones here are the fills out form, visit web page, and clicks link on web page. So we can see that if it's filling out a form, we can also get the web page that the form was filled out on. We can get the IP address that the person came from. And then if it's visiting a web page, we get these two things, but then we also get the referrer of the web page visit, the search engine, and the search query. So you can check out this docs to see all the trigger tokens that are available outside of the default two triggers that are available for every trigger action. So now I'm going to walk you through examples of how you can use trigger tokens in Marketo. And the very first one I'm going to use is going to use the visit web page activities. And it's going to show you how you can bring in all the trigger tokens and store them in field values. So if we go to the docs here, we see for the visit web page activity, there are seven trigger tokens available. So my smart campaign in Marketo, it triggers on the visits web page trigger. And then in the flow, it's just a series of change data value flow steps, which takes each of these triggers and stores them in the field. So this is a very simple smart campaign, but the reason I wanted to set it up is just to show you what some of these tokens look like once the smart campaign actually runs. So if we go to the results tab now, I'll highlight all the change data values from the last run of the smart campaign. So you can kind of do a bit of comparison here to say, okay, I see dummy change from null to visit web page so therefore the trigger dot trigger name value must be visit web page i see that dummy two changed from null to telnext.com forward slash products forward slash zip trunks so that must mean that the trigger dot name value is this web page url so as i mentioned before the trigger dot trigger name is the name of the trigger which in this case is visit web page and then the trigger.name is the object of that trigger. And since this is visit web page, the object of the trigger is the web page URL. And this just happens to be the exact same thing as the trigger.web page token. That's why these two change data value flow steps both end up being the same final result. Then we can see the IP address, the referrer, and the search engine here as well that we get from these tokens IP address, referrer, and search engine. However, I'm not exactly sure what the trigger.search query is because I even tried visiting a web page with UTM parameters in the query string, and this was still null. 
So that's why you don't see a change data value here for this trigger.search query because it was never populated. And I'm not quite sure exactly how to get that to populate. So if you figure that one out, leave a comment in the YouTube video here. So this just gives you an idea of what each of these values for a trigger token is. And to show you an example of how we use this in one of our smart campaigns, you can see that we've got the fills out form event here. And you'll notice that I'm using a CAPTCHA normalized score is not suspicious. If you want to find out more about that and how you can use Marketo's CAPTCHA integration with Google's reCAPTCHA version three, then take a look at Take a look at this blog post here because it shows you how you can use that CAPTCHA integration to filter out bot submissions to your forms. So ignore these two triggers and this filter for now. Just focus on we're filling out a form and the form name contains any one of these four things. And ignore the CAPTCHA normalized score for the moment. So this is what causes the smart campaign to run. And I'll show you now how you can use trigger tokens within flow choice logic within your flows. So unfortunately, you can't use trigger tokens directly. So if you say if trigger dot name, so you just saw there, I tried to type in trigger dot name and it just removed it automatically. Unfortunately, you can't use trigger token values directly in choice logic. However, what you can do is you can use a intermediary dummy field, store all the trigger token context in this dummy field. So you'll see here, I'm storing the trigger name, trigger dot name, and then the trigger dot web page. And then here I say, if dummy contains demo, then I know the form that was filled out was the book a demo form. Or if it contains integration, I know it's the integration request form. If it was partner, I know it was the partner's form and so on. So here I can use the dummy and then I'll set the person's MQL source detail information based on this. So this is very useful because being able to use these trigger token values within your choice logic allows you to save on the number of smart campaigns you need to build. So in the case that most of the flow steps are the exact same, for every single form, instead of having to create a new smart campaign for every form, what you can do is like I've done here, have one single smart campaign triggering on all the form fills, and then you just use choice logic in the one flow step that's different based on the form. And this logic can also, can also be applied in general to, in the case that you've got a, in the case that you've got flow actions that are the same, the vast majority of the time, no matter what the trigger is, instead of having a different smart campaign for each trigger, which has more or less the exact same flow steps every time, you could have one smart campaign for all the triggers, and then you could use choice logic and trigger tokens for that one flow action that's different from the rest. So then you can get away using one smart campaign for multiple triggers. So. It was hard to explain that, especially live over a video, but I think I've explained that quite succinctly and quite well in these two paragraphs in the post here. So if you want a restatement of how these trigger tokens can help you build less smart campaigns, check out these two paragraphs. The next example I'm going to walk you through, which is probably the most valuable thing I've gotten from trigger tokens is how you can use them to extract field values from custom activities. So as I mentioned at the top of the post, the trigger.name token always contains the primary attribute value of a custom activity. So to give you a refresh of what the primary attribute value is, if we go to this purchase number custom activity, the primary activity is always denoted by the asterisk when you go to the fields tab, and then all other fields do not have an asterisk beside them. So this field with the asterisk is a primary attribute value. And if we go to so we can see like this MC number search, it's got one primary attribute value and then all the other fields are listed here. And to show you 
what that looks like when you're going to a smart list, for example. So I'll pull this out. The primary attribute value is always the default constraint that's available when you pull that custom activity into the smart list. So if I put in purchase here, So we can see that this is the default constraint that's always available when I pull the filter into the smart list. I can never get rid of it. So that's how you know that this timestamp value is the primary attribute value for this custom activity. And then all other fields are available as constraints. And if we go to that number search one I showed you earlier, No, not that one. So again, we've got the primary attribute value here as the default constraint, and then all those other fields I showed you earlier on are available here as additional constraints. And I'll show you now how you can pull in any of these field values using trigger tokens. So the smart campaign, it's got a very simple smart list. It just pulls in the custom activity, custom activity for the number is purchased event. And then in the flow, populate the trigger dot trigger name, which will just be the name of this trigger, which is MC number is purchased. The trigger dot name I mentioned will always be the primary attribute value. So in this case, it will be the timestamp value. And then the trigger dot quantity will contain the value from the quantity field. So I've made a note here within the blog post that says trigger dot field name, where field name is the name of the custom activity field. So in this case, it's quantity, but it could also be, depending on the custom activity, it could also be here, it could be fax, SMS. So if I wanted to pull these in using a trigger token, it would be trigger dot fax, trigger dot SMS, trigger.mpa, trigger.nxx, and that would pull these values in. So if we go to the results tab here, we'll see that the trigger.trigger .trigger name token is equal to MC purchase number. The trigger.name value is the timestamp value. And then finally, trigger.quantity brings in the quantity field. So we can see that the person purchase 10 numbers. And also, if you want to pull in the primary attribute value, if I did trigger dot timestamp here, that would pull in this timestamp value as well. So there's two ways to access the primary attribute value, you can either use the trigger dot name value, or you could do trigger dot, and then put in the name of the primary attribute value like timestamp here. <clears throat> the final example I want to show you about trigger tokens is how you can use them in webhooks to send context about the trigger that caused a smart campaign to run. So in this example, I've got a webhook to send a message to Slack. And if you want to know how you can set up webhooks from Marketo to send to Slack, I've linked to a blog post I read on this that shows you how to set up this integration. So check that out if you want to be able to send webhooks to Slack. But going back to my admin section here, you put in your Slack URL, then all you have to do is put in the trigger token values within the payload template. So if you want somewhere to start from, if you go to the blog post, you can copy this code as a good starting point and put that in your payload template. And then let's go to our smart campaign. So we just use the simple fills out form event. And then in the flow, just to show you how these trigger token values will be different than when we use them in the visit web page smart campaign here, I'll just populate all these fields. And then we're going to send the webhook to Slack. So what this looks like in the results tab. So we can see that the trigger dot trigger name is fill out form. The trigger dot name value is the name of the form, which makes sense. And then we've got the web page URL, 
that the form was filled out on and then the client IP address. So if we just go to the Marketo documentation quickly, we can see these are all four of the trigger tokens available for the fills out form activity. And this is what it looks like when those values actually get populated. And then we send the webhook to Slack. So if I show you what it looks like in Slack, now we get the message and then we get those exact same trigger token values populated in a message within Slack. So what's next now that you know how to use Marketo trigger tokens? I encourage you to take a look at your smart campaigns and your webhooks to see could you optimize them and reduce the number of smart campaigns you're using by using trigger tokens? Or if you've got custom activities, maybe you could unlock some totally new functionality now that you're able to extract the field values from those custom activities. So I'm very excited to see what you very excited to see what you and your team can do with this information. And within this blog post, I already mentioned webhooks and I also mentioned custom activities. And I just wanted to let you guys know that I will be writing blog posts on these two topics um, pretty soon. So subscribe here on YouTube or go to the blog and subscribe if you want to be notified when I launch these two posts about webhooks and custom activities. If you want to subscribe on the blog, just follow this button here and then just fill out the form and then you'll get an email every time I launch a new post. So I hope this, I hope this video walkthrough was useful for you and showed you how you can use trigger tokens within your smart campaigns to reduce the number of smart, how you can use trigger tokens within smart campaigns to populate field values, reduce the number of smart campaigns you need to provide token, to provide context about what triggered a smart campaign to run via webhooks and how you can also use it in the conditional logic of your flows. And then finally, how you can use it to extract field values from custom activities. Thanks for listening. See you soon.